Welcome to the online ministry of Faith Christian Fellowship. FCF is a dynamic word and spirit empowered church where faith and family meet. If you would like more information about our church or other media resources, please visit us at faithchristianfellowship.com. We hope you enjoy this message. Ephesians chapter 3 and I, I want to I want to continue talking to you about love and uh, I want us to, to get a grasp of this and uh, just couldn't really shake this and uh, um, really just talking a couple weeks ago before we had the vacation from church uh, we talked about this on a Wednesday night about love and the power of love and what that is and uh, we talked basically a lot last time about how much God loves us and that's important we need to get our wrap our mind around it so we want to talk about some more of these things and just keep keep plowing on and in uh, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 it says this for this reason I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You can stop right there. That's good right there. That you and I will not experience fullness unless we have our love walk. We understand love and we have our love walk intact. Let's read on. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah! Right? That's good. And that's, we, we quote that right there a lot. But we stop. The way that he can do abundant things, the way that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, it's according or to the degree to the power that's working in us. It's to that degree that God is unleashed. Now I want you to get this in your heart tonight because love releases God into our environment. God, God works in an environment of love. That's where God's working at. Galatians 5, 6 says, faith works by love. In the Amplified, it says it like this. For if we are, no, that's not it. Galatians 5, 6, I think I put 6 maybe, is that it? Yeah, that's it, yeah, I'm sorry. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith, look what it says, activated and energized and expressed and working through love. So it's, so the love of God it, it, it activates my faith, it energizes my faith, and it, it's how my faith is expressed, it's through love. So if my love walk's not right, if, if, my, if I don't understand love, if I don't have a comprehension of what love is, I, if I have none of this, listen, it's going to hinder me. It's going to hinder me. Faith, everything that we do comes out of faith, everything. I mean, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You're saved by faith, filled with the Holy Ghost by faith, healed by faith, delivered by faith. It's all by faith. And the scripture says in 1 John 5, 4, that it's our faith that causes us to be world overcomers. The way that we overcome the world is through our faith. The way that we're going to go and overcome the attacks of the enemy is through faith. But if my love walk's not right, my faith's not going to work. Amen. That's a good word right there. Praise the Lord. I praise God. Hello, all. Faith is what causes us to be an overcomer. So God wants us to do, he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. But it's going to be according to the power of love. Now, it's vice versa. Think about it now. Think about this. The scripture says that My faith is energized by my love. God works in the environment of love. This is where he works at. According to this power. But think we're the enemy. James 3.16 says this. For where there's envy and strife, there's confusion 
in every evil work. So love is the environment that God operates in. And the enemy is in the, he's, he operates in the realm of strife and division. He operates in the realm of, 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 uh, of uh, over here in, in discord and, 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 and all this junk over here. And it's confusion. That's the environment that the enemy works in. But God's in the environment of love. Come on. So the thing is, is that you've got to protect it. You've got to protect love in your home. You've got to protect love at your work. You've got to protect love in your walk. You've got to protect it. Listen, if something's going on with me, I have to check up first with my love walk. If I'm not seeing prayers answered, listen, you were never made to not have answered prayers. You see, you never see instructions in the Word of God, whether how God instructs you how, not, how to handle not, not having answered prayers. You never have that. Why? Because you and I are never made to have prayers not answered. Come on, somebody. You, 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 this, is not, this, is not, this is not the realm that is... We are, in a, we are in a covenant with Almighty God. That's why the Bible says He's given us the Word. He's given us that way we can ask things according to His will. And if we ask anything according to His will, He'll do it for us. So you and I ought not be tolerating unanswered prayers. Come on, somebody. So we need to be asking hard questions. You know, we, this is where crazy stuff starts coming up. We get crazy theology because there's a prayer not answered. Next thing you know, you get this crazy theology. Well, God's done this or God's done that. And you got all these concoctions of theology that starts coming up. Why is that? It's because somebody probably has had a disappointment with not having a prayer answered. That's good preaching right there. Praise the Lord. So the thing is, you've got to make sure we stay Christ-centered. We've got to stay Christocentric. We've got to stay Word-centric. We've got to make sure that our lives is all around this. And love is the taproot of the believer. Are you with me? It's the taproot of the believer. What's a taproot? Taproot is, a taproot, a taproot is, a, is the main root that goes into the ground. And all the other roots come off of that root. And it's the biggest root... It supplies the most nourish, nourishment or nutrients to the plant or the tree. It's through that taproot. This is the single most important thing in our walk. That's why the Bible says these three things, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is the taproot called the taproot of love. So if our love is being tapped out by the enemy, you're going to find out all the rest of the stuff in our life is not going to work right. Are you with me here? That's why the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he said, pursue love. The Amplified says, make it your great aim and great quest. Make love your great aim and great quest. And see, this, this is not a fancy message. We've heard this message. Come on. But I'm going to be the first to admit I don't have this all down yet. Right? I want to make sure that I have this because this is the thing that will cause everything. The Bible calls love the bond of maturity. The glue. Love is the glue that keeps it all together. Amen. I feel my help up here. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Look what he says in Ephesians 4. Let's go back down to 3. Again, look what he says right here in verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you be in what? Rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18. May be able to what? Comprehend with all the saints. Not some of the saints, but what? Everybody needs to have a comprehension of love. Everybody needs to have a comprehension of love. The word comprehend means, uh, actually here in the Greek, it means to possess, especially with the mind. It, it means to take, to, to, to take in whatever manner. He said, you make sure you take this. You comprehend love, comprehend love no matter what it takes. Whatever it takes, you make sure that you comprehend what love is. You make sure you take and possess this. You make sure you get it in your mind. You make sure you learn about it. You get it in you. That way when someone squeezes you, everything comes out of you is love. 
And see, the thing is, don't get condemned. See, the deal is, is this, and, and I'm not saying any of this to condemn anybody, but it's, come on, if somebody, if, if somebody puts a little pressure on you, because see, people are going to come to agitate you. Hello, hello, hello. But when they squeeze you, what's, what's in you starts coming out of you. So, so, so listen, don't get condemned. I mean, just tweak your heart. So what happens is the squeak comes on, right? The pressure comes on, and next thing you know, bam, it comes out. I mean, stuff maybe starts coming out of you that, that, that you never thought it was going to come out of you. Or, or maybe you start responding in anger. The first thing you do is respond in anger. Well, it should tell you something. Stop. Let it reveal the blind spot in your life. It's an area you need to sure up and get your mind renewed in this area again. Amen. So we comprehend. God wants us to comprehend. The last time we were together, we talked about God wants to comprehend us to comprehend how much God loves us. How much He loves us. How much He loves us. Because if you don't know how much God loves you, you'll never trust Him. You'll, you, will not, you will not operate in faith if you don't know how much God loves you. Well, how can you say that? I can say that because this. Listen, if, if, if you don't know me, if I come up to you, Peggy, and said, Peggy, I'd like to borrow $500. Would you have any, if you had it with you, would you have any problem handing me $500? You wouldn't. Because why? You trust me. It's relational. But see, if you don't know how much God loves you, if you don't know Him, when He starts coming to ask of you, and you start asking Him, and you don't see anything, and you don't know Him, you're not going to trust Him, so your faith is not going to operate in the realm that it needs to. Listen, you'll never step up and, and pray for somebody if you don't know that God loves you. You've got to know He's a good dad. He is a good father. He loves us. And we've talked about this. Let's, let's look, look right here up on the board in Romans chapter 8. I was going to go to 1 John 5, but uh, actually, let's go to 1 John 5. We need to do that. I was going to, no, yeah, yeah, let's do it. I think we need to see it. 1 John 5. Turn there with me or watch up on the board, but lay your eyes on this thing. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. If I can make it through without stopping here, because it's going to be really hard. Because this is one of the greatest chapters in the Bible. It's awesome. With 1 John, it's just great. But in this is love. He's going to find. So this is what love is. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation or the substitute for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that the Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are what we in this world as he is so are we in this world look what it says there is no fear in love but perfect love Cast out fear, because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Now look what it says here in verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. you got to know it, and you got to believe that God loves you. You have to know it, and you have to believe it. Now, you can know it, but never believe it. You can know it, but never believe it. So if I'm going to operate in this, and I'm going to understand and comprehend God and comprehend His love, I've got to know He loves me. Now, look what it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Check this out. Now, this will rock you. I've been on this script for about three weeks. Right here. He who did not spare his own son, 
But deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now this is huge. Let's, let's lay this out a second. It would be like you taking your firstborn son. Somebody's over in jail. On death row. Uh, or whatever. And, and, and they're there sitting in jail. Guilty. Of whatever would be. And you offering up your firstborn son to die for that person in jail. To release them. So all of a sudden the son died. The person was released out of jail. It's like this. It's like that person that you gave your son for comes to your house. Not only has he been set scot-free and your son died in his place. But he comes to the house, knocks on your door, and says, I'd like to have his bedroom. Could I have his car keys? Get this. This is what the scripture is saying. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? So the supreme sacrifice was Jesus. Healing is, is, is a part of the freely things that are given to us. Why do we have a hard time receiving it? Why do we have a hard time receiving things from God? Why are we struggling with it? Because see, listen, the Bible says he gave his son. And if that was the supreme sacrifice, everything else is just toppings on the cake. He loves us. He loves us. God loves us. And we got to wrap our mind around that. This is the key. Are you with me here? So that's the first thing we talked about. How God loves us. Amen. Are you with me here? So now I got to understand God's love in me. So now the first thing is God's love for me. Now I understand. Got to start understanding God's love in me. Romans 5.5 5 says this. Put that on the board. Romans 5.5 5, it says this. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now let me ask you the question. You guys know it. It's not a trick question. Where is the love of God at? It's in my, it's in my heart. It's inside of me. This is where the love of God is at. So the root of love is in me. It's in me. And you can tap into that root anytime you want to. Galatians 5.22 says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, right? Those nine things, right? So love is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. So you look at me and say, well, I could never love my enemy. No, that's wrong. You could love your enemy. You can love your enemy. You can love people that don't love you. You can do it. You can. Why? Because the love of God is in you. Now, that's unconventional to the world. It's completely unconventional. So the world says, hold a grudge. Uh, take offense. The world says, uh, see, we're all homeschooled in the wrong home. See, we've all come out of that world system. So now, all of a sudden, you and I start stepping into a kingdom, trying to operate in a kingdom on past experiences and past, past, uh, uh, past, uh, past teachings and, and past thought patterns. And it doesn't work that way. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about extending love to people. I'm talking about being gracious to people. I'm talking about not taking offense because somebody said something about us. Come on, somebody. This is the deal. The world's not seeing this. I'm, I, I'm in the boat with you. I'm not preaching because I think that I'm high and mighty. I'm in the boat with you. But the world has seen enough of this junk. There's no difference anymore. Come on, somebody. Are you with me here? Look what it says in 1 Corinthians 7.23. Look what it says here in the King, New King James. It says, you were bought at a price. Do not become the slaves of men. Now look what it says in the Message Bible. You love it. All of you, slave and free, both were once held hostage in a sinful society. Then a huge sum was paid out for your ransom. So please don't, out of old habits, slip back into being or doing what everybody else tells you. Now, now, I, now this, is, this is huge. People label you. People say you're not going to come out of this. You're, you're going to be this. You're going to do that. And you're going to, have to do this. 
It says you were bought with a price. The value, your, your supreme value. The blood of Jesus is on your head. He loves you. And this love is in me. This love to love the enemy. Come on. That's what Jesus was doing on the cross. Come down from there. Come down from there. Won't you come down from there? Jesus was shouting to him, I ain't on this thing for me. I'm on it for them. But we take stuff so personal. Come on, we've all been here. The next thing you know, we're just, we've got a fence in our heart. Next thing you know, we're spewing out junk out of our mouth. And we're showing nobody any love, nobody any grace. Well, they love me and I love them. I don't take anything, that don't take anything to do. Come on, somebody. Turn with me real quick to Matthew 5. Let me just kind of lay this down a little bit more. In Matthew 5, we've been here before, but I want to show you again. Matthew chapter 5. In verse 43. Where's this love at? Where, where's it at? It's in you. The root of love is where? It's in you. The root of love where? It's in you. God's love is in you. It, it, this is in you. It's been placed in you. Now, now, now look what it says here in verse 43. It says, you heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you. Now, Jesus is changing it up. Jesus steps in and says, hold on a second here. I'm changing some things. You've heard it said like this. What everybody else says to do. Listen, let me, let me, I don't know why this has dropped in my heart. Listen to me. Psalm 1-1 says, uh, blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Quit getting your counsel from people that are not godly. And quit listening to everybody else that running their chops. Come on, somebody. I've been right there in the work spot. I know what that's like. And all of a sudden, they're talking about the boss and talking about this. And and, this is what I think. And this is what I think they ought to do. And I think all this stuff. Listen, don't quit taking your counsel from there. They're saying this, but I'm telling you to do this. Look what he says. But I say to you, love your enemies. Oh, boy. Come on. We love this one, right? Bless those who what? Hold on a second. I don't know if we understand that. I don't know if I under. Come on, I'm talking about wrapping our mind around this. This love that's in us, it's in here. It's in here. Whether you're using it or not, it's in there. It's down there. It's in your heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. We look at the love, 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 love down in my heart. It's in there. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be what? Sons of your father. The DNA. He said when you go and you start doing this stuff. People start seeing what you're made out of. Start seeing who you're related to. And start understanding that you're out of this world. Look at your neighbor and say, you're out of this world. I'm helping you. I'm helping your spouse. I'm helping you right now, spouses. I really am. I'm helping you. You're out of this world. That you may be sons and sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil, on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the what? Remember I told you at the very beginning of this thing when we started talking that God, God works in the environment of love. The habitat of love. He says, when you start walking in this, it will start sending blessing on you. See, rain was a blessing. But rain was a blessing during the Bible times. They, 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 when rain came, it was a blessing for them. He said, listen, you're serving a good dad. And listen, when you get in an environment of love, he starts blessing those that, 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 that are good and blessing those that are bad. He starts blessing everybody because he's just a blesser. Because when you get in the habitat of God, something starts happening to everybody that comes in contact with it. That's what he's saying. He said he makes his sun rise on the, on, uh, on the evil, on the good. That means, you know what, blessing on the good and the evil. Listen, because of your presence right where you're at, listen, and because you're a person of love, you're a man of love, you're a woman of love, listen, you right, step right in the middle of an environment, start bringing peace to it. Listen, the blessing of God will start falling on everybody because he's good. 
He wants people to see his goodness. But there's got to be a releasing of love in the environment. Let's read on. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? He said, if you love those that love you, and you give to those that just give to you, big deal. People that are sinners do that. Scratch my back, I scratch yours. It happens every day in corporate America. That's the way sinners operate. But he says, you're not from this world. And you tap in, you have a different root that you can tap into. And there's a source of nutrients that you can pull out, but they're not, they can only reciprocate what they receive. So listen, this is why people do what they do. Quit getting mad at people that are sinners. They just reciprocate what's been given to them. So if someone comes to them and hates on them, guess what's coming out of the center? Hey, it's just reciprocating. They have nothing else. They have no other source to draw from. They have no other source. But as a believer, you've got love in you. So you have a source you can tap into that they don't have. So when, it, when it's time to reciprocate, I don't reciprocate what's been given to me. You say, well, that's that easy for you, Pastor? No, it's not. But there's a root of love in me. And when somebody curses me, I have a choice. They don't have a choice. They curse back. But for you and I, we stand in the valley of decision. So what will we do? Will we tap into the root? Or tap into our old thinking, and all of a sudden now, the cycle continues, and we never make a difference. We never see change. We never see people broken by the love of God. See, the love of God will break people. It will. It will break someone. I see it happen at work. I see it happen so many times at my work, where I wouldn't respond like everybody else responded. And the love of God would actually just invade the room. It breaks people. But we are so used. We're not, we've not renewed this right here. To how much God loves us. Because when I know how much God loves me. How can I not extend love to somebody else? How could I not? Why? Because I saw. I've, I, have, I have seen what the. Uh, I have seen the, uh, the depravity of my condition. And what he's forgiven me of. Look what he says. If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Not even the tax collectors. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. What's he saying? He said, when you go and you choose to walk in love, bless those that curse you, do good to those that despitefully use you, the scripture says you start modeling what the Father is like. And that's why Jesus said in John 13, 35, if you love, people will know that you are my disciples. This is out of this world. This is different. This is not usual. It's supernatural. You cannot love people with your own natural love. Amen? Can I get a good amen on this? Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? got the master's card get the master's card see when you have a credit card and I've talked about this I've preached a whole message on it but when you when you got a credit card you dip into funds that you don't have it's it, it, you dip into somebody else's account that's what it is you tap into somebody else's money it's an institution it's a bank Somebody's got money in that bank. There's people that's got money and they're funding for you to whatever, right? 
So it's the same thing with God. All we're doing is tapping in to Him. And it's grace. There's grace to love. There's grace to walk in this. It's powerful. The love of God is powerful. Now, number three, and I'm going to finish this up. God's love through me. God's love through me. So first you have the God's love for me. God's love. It's in there. It's in there. Just check, check up. Check up tomorrow and just think about it. Just wake up tomorrow morning and say, the love of God's in me. See, that's how you make it a reality. Faith's confessions produces realities. So I'm going to encourage you. And I've, I've said this before from the pulpit, I think, before. But I want you to take 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, and just take that and make that your confession. Make it. But let, let's put that up there, 1 Corinthians. It, it don't, it's not on what I gave you. You'll have to look it up. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Let's go in the New Living Translation. This just would be a good time to do this. Because this, this is how you bring this out of you. This is how you bring this out of you. This is how you draw this stuff. See, see the Bible says you've got to keep the love of God or, or you've got to keep this stuff at the forefront of your thinking. If not, you'll get infected by the world. Look what he says. Uh, yeah, uh, a person who speaks in tongues is strengthened in person. But No, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 13. I'm sorry, I said 14. 13, verse 4. Yeah. All right, you ready? Okay, because this is love. Let's just read it together. This will be good. All right, read. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Yeah, prophecy and speaking in an unknown language and special knowledge will become a useless, sorry. I was used to reading out of New King James. But love will last forever. One translation says, I am bankrupt without love. This needs to be your confession. Wake up tomorrow and make it your confession. Faith confessions create realities. And you say, well, I don't know how to do this. I don't understand how to do this. Let me help you out. I'm going to tell you this, and then we'll make some closing remarks. Look, how to release love. How do I get this thing out of me? Number one, I've got to stay love of God conscience. I've got to stay love of God conscience. If you notice yourself becoming irritable, has anybody ever become irritable before? Not anybody, I know. So you guys are angels. I've seen Joe raise her hand. Thank you. You're going to heaven, Joe. You're being honest. <laughs> I've got to come on out now. We got to, yeah, I'm going to heaven. Praise the Lord. I, yeah. <laughs> but we start finding ourselves, we need to check up. I'm not saying we don't have bad days, but we can have a bad day and not be hard to be, get along with. Uh, 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 that went over well. <laughs> love of God conscience. Stay love of God conscience. Stay love of God conscience. Marianne, pull Ephesians 3.17 back up again for me. We've got to renew our mind to love. And Christ, look what he says. We said a minute ago. And Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now the word here, heart, we gotta, we got to understand and divide that out. When we see the word heart in the New Testament and the Old Testament, we've got to understand what it is. The heart is comprised of the soul and the spirit. Okay, it's just like when, when you know, uh, where it says, uh, out of the, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, where's it? uh, it's coming to me. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, it's that scripture. Don't you know it? Don't you, don't you, don't you, uh, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> not coming to me I know what I want to say but I well anyway your heart has to be 
you have to understand what it is. Your heart is, is more than just your, your, your spirit. It's, it's your mind too. So I got to keep Christ. Love. Christ is love. That love may dwell in your heart, your souls through faith. You got to keep faith at the forefront of your thinking. Make it your confession. Make it your confession. Renew your mind to love. Confess love. How do I release that love? How do I get this love out of me? Number one, you got to be love of God conscience. And number two, you got to make a choice to respond by faith. This is the deal. Tomorrow, tonight, maybe next week or next year, someone's going to confront you. Going to say something to you. Say something about you. Going to do something to you. May try to cheat you. Now I've got a choice. So I mean, I don't know how I could ever forgive. And maybe some of you in here are just having a hard time forgiving folks. How do you forgive? You forgive by faith. You love by faith. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through feelings. Is that what it says? It's through faith. How do, I, how, do I, how, do I, how do I love somebody? How do I love the unloved? Well, you love them through faith. And you've got to make the choice to step out and love somebody that's unlovable. you just got to do it. Practice on somebody. Practice on somebody. It may be your kids tomorrow when they're running crazy in the house. And craziness is going on in their house. Anybody ever had craziness going on in their house? Come on. Right? Have your kids do something really crazy? You have to stop. Make a choice. Someone walk in love. I don't feel like it. It's got nothing to do with your feelings. And if you'll move by faith, guess what will happen? Your feelings will come. Now you say, man, Pastor Paul, you don't know what somebody's done to you. I, maybe I don't. I get it. But it's still, I can't sit here and tell you that it's okay for you to, be, to hold unforgiveness and grudges. It's not right. I'm sorry, but it's not. It's not right for you to do that. God doesn't want you to do that. Come on, are you understanding what I'm saying? Practice on somebody. So it might be the coworker tomorrow. Practice on somebody. Tap into grace tomorrow. Tap into grace. There's a grace. If you love somebody that loves you, there's no grace for that. There's no grace there. That's easy to do. Someone helps you and you help them, that's easy to do. That's an easy thing. It's when we are responding when there is nothing, we're expecting nothing in return. That's love. So first, I've got to stay love of God conscious. Love of God conscious. And the second thing, the way I let this love flow through me, I've got to respond in faith and step out and love the unlovable. Buy my moon pie. An RC cola and a moon pie. I don't know. Just do something for them. Bless them. Bless them. Someone does something, just bless them. Come on, it'll break down the walls every time. It'll break down the walls. It will completely disarm someone. They won't know what to say. Now they may look at you and say, okay, you're weird. You know what I'm saying? Or they may come and continue to berate you. But you walk away there with your head high. Knowing, you know what? I done the right thing. And I was the better person. Don't stoop to somebody else's stupidity. That's a quote for Twitter right there. Don't stoop to somebody's stupidity. Don't. Don't stoop down for that. You're not created for it. Amen?
Thank you for listening to this message. For more information, please visit us at faithchristianfellowship.com.